Okay, so this is going to be the second class on PTSD. And we added um, some information on domestic violence. Um, I always send you guys the notes that I write. Um, and so I'm going to start with those. Um, and it's going to be uh, an individual um, that um, I worked with, but it's an alias, okay? So you can kind of like get an idea of not just talking about symptoms, but how they play out in your life or someone else's life and how you can help others with this information or even refer them to the information for themselves. So when I met Trainee, she spoke of detailed encounters of uh, violent abuse as a child from her parents. So both of the parents were violent towards one another and towards her and her siblings. As she became adolescent age, she longed for a boyfriend. I look at it as a superhero, uh, a knight, which I know I'm against knights when we're queens, but anyway, moving on, a boyfriend who could rescue her from the dreaded life she lived. She experienced crippling nervousness. Anxiety is nervousness, sometimes when you're worrying, blended with sensations of grief and depression. Grief can come from the solace or the sorrow, melancholy feelings of having an unsatisfactory life and depression. Depression is pressure, it's pressing you to see where you have a problem and that's how it shows up in your body is actually that these symptoms are saying, could you pay attention to me and could you come on and let's solve this problem? It's not that I just stay with this here feelings of melancholy and sorrow and depression and you know just live like this and claim that I have these things. Now, I definitely wanna say that if we have been diagnosed, I'm not saying that I'm gonna take that away from you, but um, the outline and the look at all of this is for us to know how to manage symptoms because probably 100% of the people in the world have had these symptoms. They come and they go, um, predicated on how we take care of our body. So she was married. However, her relationship was suffering from the heaviness of the behaviors and symptoms she experienced during her childhood. So her past was in her present moment. She was experiencing um, symptoms from her childhood. In previous years, she had put on weight, experiencing impairing headaches and battled with sleep deprivation. Um, if these areas are not met, like if you're having headaches, you won't be able to function. If you're overweight, you won't feel good about yourself. Um, and if you don't sleep well, you won't be able to function because you need at least six to eight hours of rest in order for the brain to um, be able to function properly and for the body to get rested so that it can repair itself because the body has that ability. It knows what it needs to do, even though we've been told by society where to go and get what we need, right? All right. So headaches, um, they can come from all different types of things. Hydration, uh, weight comes from um, overeating, of course. Um, it can be biological, uh, but there's ways to um, work with these three aspects. Um, even um, Nye is on today and she works with wellness and weight management. All right. So I want everybody to know that so you can always go and look at um, at night. Ayla Oni speaks on Instagram. Um, moving on. Trainee was talented at trying not to manage her awful past. Uh, what that means is, is that she didn't want to face the past, so she just put it aside. Um, to endure, she had figured out how to cover her excruciate, excruciating sentiments and recollections of pain. She had masks, which is what most people do. Though she kept her past silent and had moved away from those connected to her past, 
She knew the issues within her body were a message that she needed inner healing. So her body was again telling her what she needed. All right, so in PTSD, what we're looking for and in domestic violence, because last week we talked about a little bit of everything. I wanna cover in these weeks, different paradigms of issues where trauma come up, such as murder, um, um, how they come upon us through um, violence, you know what I'm saying, uh, rape, these areas. And so here, domestic violence is a focus, but other areas may come up so that you can know um, we're not overlooking um, and saying that, oh, um, I just had stress because, you know, I was stressed out from work or my life was stressed out. Usually there is a traumatic situation. Someone may have uh, passed in your life and it set off um, neurons and um, uh, dopamine that uh, cause these uh, stressful situations to become plummeting, all right? So domestic violence and PTSD is at least two symptoms that we may experience or someone we know might be experiencing. So um, some of the symptoms that you're gonna get um, or feel are anxiety, depression. Um, you may have fits of rage. I'm gonna come back to that one, by the way. Self-harm, overeating, grief. Um, your voice may have been silenced, overeating, or no, overreacting, self-centeredness. Um, I want to go back to fits of rage because anxiety and fits of rage, I believe that a lot of people may be experiencing right now. Um, it's not just so that they may have PTSD, but it could be the energies that we experience indefinitely because um, there's an impulsive desire to do something and people don't know what it is that they want to do. All right. Um, I always say meditation. I don't say it in a cavalier way, but I say it in a way that means that you need to spend some time with yourself so that you can observe your body and the way that you're breathing and the way that you're thinking and bring it into a peaceful state because we have that ability, we have that power. So after self-centeredness, we also want to look at transference of spirits. Transference of spirits is the transfer of spirits from one person to another. Transference of spirits is part and parcel of every mankind here on earth. So that means that even as Ashley is out at the park with um, Lyric, those children are transferring spirits, whether um, happy or not happy. And this is why we do become protective. It's not that I'm saying that to Ashley, but I'm saying, um, I think it was Denzel Washington in a movie called, I think it was, um, is it Fallen? Anyway, he had a movie he was in and every, everyone that touched each other, you could see spirits that were transferring and it's very, very true. So transference of spirits is part and parcel of every mankind here on earth. Uh, there are two types of transference of spirits and it's positive or holy transference of spirits and then negative or unholy transference of spirits. And so my experience with that has been to live in um, a world of someone else's and actually know that I had the power of discipline over myself, but for about 10 years, I experienced a lot of worry. I even began to think that it was mine until I was removed from that situation and found that the aura of that individual dissipated. So when you're in someone else's energy field or they're in yours, you're going to um, feel uh, their energy. And that's a way um, that you'll know how sensitive you are. The other thing is, is that they'll feel yours. And ironically enough, that's why empaths are drawn to narcissistic individuals. Once you draw your energy back, um, you won't have that problem because they'll understand that you know who you are. That's just a little bit of adding in there because PTSD comes from a situation of stress and it is traumatic stress and it is something that happened for a lot of people when they were younger. So if you had parents and there was a violent situation, inevitably what you're gonna do is you're either gonna be in that paradigm for the rest of your life until you figure it out you're either going to move away and still have that paradigm of living until you figure out that you have to 
internally change it. How do you internally change it? Well, uh, you know, I'm gonna go here. If you study and you're a spiritual individual and you're practicing daily, it has to change. The reason why that's what spiritual practices are about is no if, ands, or buts about it. You know, I've had people that will say to me, well, you know, I tried meditating and this and that. Well, you tried meditating, but did you quiet down your mind? Because meditation is not about your mind continuously moving and thinking when your eyes are closed. It's about stealing the mind. And I remember um, talking with someone, and I do talk with people, of course, because I work in this field. But I remember talking to someone when I was in school, and I said, um, you might go and um, see if you can talk to someone about depression. And they told me that um, they bind those words because the blood of Jesus was against depression. Well, that's true. But if you're not actively working towards um, symptoms that you have, then the blood of Jesus is going to do nothing for you. And I said this because when you're meditating, you're not doing um, any help for yourself if you're not actually using meditation the way that it should be used, just as prayer. If you're thinking about your situation or the worries and you're praying, then why worry, why pray and worry, right? So um, when the individual told me that um, the blood of Jesus was against depression, I did not rule it out. What I know about depression is my own personal experience. Usually whenever you experience something, you're going to be able to call it out after a certain amount of time when you learn yourself, you're going to see it in others. It's not that you are um, mandated that you tell people this, but that experience is called an anointing in your life. People don't even go through domestic violence from the beginning of their life entering in this world without domestic violence becoming a mandate or a mission for them. A lot of people are overlooking situations that God has called them to help others with. You could have, you know, been called into PTSD for a um, for the stress, you know, and a diagnosis for a um, a business, you know, for um, a nonprofit to advocate uh, from the perspective that you uh, experience, such as um, I said here. Okay, if you experience trauma, you're going to have some need for comfort. And if your need for comfort has been food, then Nye is a wellness coach. You know, someone else can teach on that and train others in that. But it's a business because it was something that's been birthed out of Naila. All right. Now, moving on from there, I want to tell you about um, the triggers, the fear. Um, is um, pulled out of you by you being triggered. You're usually triggered through subconscious memories. Uh, people come into your life that are like you. They're never different from you and I. That's how I learn. Uh, these subconscious memories actually become our present life. Yet as we awaken to our challenges, we find our former life is still functioning. So you're still living in the former, but you think you have dressed up your present time with all of these elaborate things and the breakdown is coming again because you did not actually change internally. So you could keep incorporating material things and make everything outside of you look great. But if everything is not shining within you, meaning addressing that trauma where you're not seeing someone being beat down or yourself being beat down, um, you're going to have the these moments where your, your world is going to continue to come crashing down and you rebuild it and crash again until your house is built on sturdy foundation. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So we eventually become aware through consciousness. Well, this is where we're praying and we meditate. Um, consciousness that we have been through the lens of our past exerting mental health and PTS symptoms that are not addressed. A lot of people don't even know that they have mental illness, they just performing uh, life according to what makes them happy or where they, they feel successful. And they don't know that success may not last because they're not actually being authentic. 
you know, you have this illusion that you're living. You've learned how to master an area of your life. But if God has called you to master other areas, that means that that part that you keep functioning on and cycling on is going to come down because you did not deal with your hurt and your pain from your past. That's where the sabotage comes in, where we sabotage ourselves because we, we're not paying attention to the heart, the kingdom, what's within us. So, you know, I like to tell people about um, the fact that we can have a poor kingdom before we have a rich kingdom. And, you know, that's usually surprising to people or queendom. Uh, it's surprising to people, but it's the truth. Because until you get to um, the cellular level of who you are, you're going to have to keep going back and forth to rebuild things within your life. Because you haven't got to the authentic part of you. You've been dealing with the illusion like the people or the tribe of Israel. They're continuously going around the mountain when, you know, Moses is trying to lead them um, up the mountain. We should be going up the mountain, elevating. And um, they're not going up the mountain because their behaviors is not allowing them to touch um, the mountain, you know, where Moses is, is going. They keep going around these emotions and behaviors using the same old dynamics like when they were in slavery, you know what I'm saying? Because these um, symptoms of PTSD, no offense to anyone, they enslave us to be who it wants us to be or who society told, told us to be. Um, whenever you have a spiritual practice, it is a universal who I desire to be. It is universal that you're able to obtain. I don't want to say the sky's the limits, but as high as you feel you can go. So it's really up to you and God, your goddess. All right, so in the illusion, the illusion is usually what we've seen, but it's not what we desire. So you begin to look at how you can break it. Yeah, this is all about mental health because it's all in the mind. Um, when you look at the definition of authenticity, you want to look at and see, are you living an authentic lifestyle? Are you living something that's, you know, telling you how to live? Is it what God has said that you should live or is it the way that people have said you should live? It's undisputed origin. It's genuine. That's what authenticity is. Um, manifesting because your manifestations usually are going to be predicated on what you think and believe. And even if you say, I believe that I'm a millionaire or I am healed or, you know, that I will not attract another man or a woman with um, domestic violent traits, you will unless you have touched the soul realm because the healing has not taken place within you. You understand? So manifestation, the materialization of a truth idea, the coming forth into visibility of that which has been affirmed, the appearance of an idea. So you and I have to begin to uh, think about what our ideas are, how we feel, you know, when we're angry, what are we manifesting anger? When we're um, lacking, what are we manifesting lack or what it appears to be lacking? Because that's what it is. It's seemingly that something has left your life. It's seeming, I always tell, you know, the young women that I work with, it seems like it did, but there's an upgrade happening. You know, nothing is ever lost in our lives. And so whatever leaves, is leaving because it's not conducive to who you are now and who you're going to be. Now, are you going to work on who you're going to be in the future? Or are you going to stay the same, claiming the same um, ideas of who you are? Because that's who you're going to manifest, you know? And the quicker we claim the highest level of who we think we can be is the quicker the manifestations that we desire come in, all right? So imagination, the faculty of mind that, that it, it, it images and forms, that's within your mind. The power to shape and form thought, I love and so I am love. This begins to shape something other than trauma and stress. I may have seen domestic violence. 
you know, I may have experienced it, but it does not have to stay there. The reason why it's there is because you have to take power over it and not let it empower itself over you. The memories, they have to become regulated where you know that you are the master of your destiny. And this is what Christ and Buddha and all of the other um, masters were uh, actually teaching us. So the imaging faculty presides at the nerve center between your eyes. Through this faculty, the formless takes form. To imagine, with our imagination, we lay hold of ideas, clothe them with substance. Do you hear what I'm saying? Listen, I, I remember someone telling me that, um, I, you know, she she said, you're a woman of substance. And I was like, okay, that's a nice way to put it. I don't put it down. But the thing is, is that when someone has tried to take you, take away from you what you are, you start feeling like what you aren't. So she would always say, you know, you are a woman of substance. Women are not they're not always like this, Ms. Kim. Okay, I thank you. But what everyone does not know is that every day we don't feel like we have substance, right, ladies and gentlemen? Um, yes. And so we have to impart that substance in order to support and build each other through stressful times, through traumatic times. How do you know that? Because every day when I get up, I don't feel like I look or even how people think, you know, I might be, oh, she's strong. I've heard that before. I am strong because I put words into me that form that substance that that young lady was speaking of. So shaping and forming my thoughts. When I was created in a thoughtless world, what do you think you're going to have out of this? Now, this is what you want to write down. Because most people isolate themselves in this trauma and stress. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you. you. You know, you were raped, you were traumatized, but how long are we gonna stay there? I mean, what, what I found is, is working in the field of behavior, at least 80% of the people, men and women, have been raped and um, molested. All right? I'm not taking nothing away from your personal experience. Not even with domestic violence, I'm saying just think about from a love walk what I'm saying and, and bring yourself out of self-centeredness because I had to. Self-centeredness means that I'm focused on my trauma. Nothing else can get in until I allow something else to get in. It's like open the door of your mind so that we can overcome these symptoms and, and manage them when they come to live a healthy life. Clothed with substance. Everyone has the ability to be clothed with substance. It's the person that does not, does not believe that they have it that feels empty. They don't believe that they have it, so they feel empty. You feel like you have no sub substance, and so you feel empty. But if you begin to feel yourself and believe what you're filling yourself with, substance begins to um, have its way in your life, such as spirit, right? So moving on from there, the body is the product of the mind. Think about it. Don't just kind of like hear me, but don't hear me. The body is the product of the mind. I heard um, it's a guru that's on um, YouTube, and he was saying that the body is everything that you eat. And I was like, dang. He said, your body shows you everything that you eat. I was like, dang, he is so right, you know? And he was getting a point across. I can't remember his name, so I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but it's he's on um, YouTube. So the body is a product of your mind. It's deep. Think about it. So if your mind is saying, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, or your mind is saying, I'm stressed out, I'm stressed out, there you are. And then the body is going to react to it because the body takes in words and it forms whatever we think and feel. This is the truth, right? It is. What man pictures or images in his mind will eventually appear in his body. All of it is the words and the emotions that we give to the words. In the communication of God with man, the imaging power of the mind plays an important role. It does because you're a creator, but you're a co-creator with God. This is the part that people miss. 
Um, you can write down John 1 and 51. According to the scripture, this is the opening of heavens and the scene, the angels of God ascending and you know, descending upon the Son of Man. And I want you to pay attention to ascending and descending for the end of this year conversation. I want you to look at, yes, um, the illusion, a thing that is or is likely to be wrongly perceived or interpreted by the senses. Now, whatever trauma you experience could be interpreted that this is the rest of my life. But it's not so, you know, because you think about a kid that experiences trauma to the place where they may not be able to use their legs, but you know, they get connected to a foundation that shows them how they can use their legs. And because they're children, they bounce back. Resilience. Resilience is the word. So it's the perception that we have concerning our situation, like it'll never get better. It's always going to be like this for me. I mean, I've been there. And that's not the truth because your authentic self knows that you can turn this around because God definitely does not give us more than we can handle. So the person looking for peace, health, and wholeness, they must search within, reconnect with their spiritual senses to bring the guiding forces that connect us with God or God is into our atmosphere and view. Um, I did bring up some information on domestic violence. Um, anyone that you know, you know, um, you want to encourage them if this is you. You want yourself to know that you can overcome whatever the memories and the thoughts of the past from the violence or domestic violence because cases tend to remain unreported. And that's for people that you know that are going through it and persist over time. A child or adolescent who has been exposed to domestic violence for a period of time before seeking professional help, um, they tend to believe that this is the way that life is. It's imperative that you know we all come together and get this information out so that people can understand that with support they can live a healthy life. That changes the paradigm of our generations and our posterity. And when we look at life overall, we have symptoms, right? Um, but within the symptoms, we either pass those symptoms down and we say it stops here. Um, some of the areas you can look at is the parasympathetic uh, aspect of yourself. If it is broken down, which means that that is your whole body function, which is automatically functioning every day, then that means that we have or an individual have a poor way of regulating their emotions, which means that we could be asking people to have emotional intelligence that are not capable because uh, the stress factor has hit them so hard that they need to repair. When they're in this kind of mode, no matter what age they are, there is a um, fight or flight uh, circumstance or the emotions that come in, which is through the sympathetic um, um, emotions, a uh, sympathetic paradigm, um, and that part activated because the sympathetic part of us says, do whatever you need to do to become safe. You understand? And that's why people are fighting. That's why in domestic violence, no matter how we see it, if we came from households that were in that um, factor, it was because the mother or the father was brought up, no doubt, in that way. And their training and mental um, status says to um, protect yourself. It's like um, nature versus nurture. Nature says protect yourself, which is what the masculine energy is supposed to do. And that's where the sympathetic um, activation of our mindsets kicks in and says, I need to be safe. And so I'm going to flee this situation. I'm running. All right. All right. So I will send over the information to you guys. And um, I'm going to stop the recording so that if you have any questions or comments, you can give that. Thank you for joining and be a blessing to someone.